Ever tried to squeeze into jeans a size too small, only to realize that the jeans weren't the problem? Yeah, me too. We often find ourselves trying to fit into things, not just pants, but expectations, standards, and roles that just aren't cut for us. We overlook a fundamental aspect of our well-being, self-love. Self-love is that warm, comforting embrace we give ourselves, acknowledging our worth, our strengths, and yes, even our flaws. It's about treating ourselves with kindness, patience, and respect, just as we would a dear friend. It's realizing that we're enough, just as we are, without the need to shrink or stretch to fit into those metaphorical genes. So let's talk about self-love, about understanding our worth beyond external appearances or societal expectations. Because just like those genes, sometimes we need to realize that the problem isn't us, but the standards we're trying to squeeze into. So why self-love matters in relationships? Just like a sandwich is best enjoyed when it's whole, a fulfilling relationship requires you to be content and complete within yourself first. Imagine a half-eaten sandwich, it's missing a part of itself, it's incomplete. That's what it's like when you enter a relationship without having a full cup of self-love. You're going in, only half full, and expecting the other person to fill up the rest. But here's the thing. Relationships aren't about filling gaps, they're about sharing wholeness. When we lack self-love, we often find ourselves settling for less than we deserve. We accept behaviors and situations that we wouldn't tolerate if we truly valued ourselves. We may even start to believe that we're not worthy of love and respect and that's a dangerous place to be. It's like being the half-eaten sandwich settling for a relationship with a stale bag of chips. Self-love isn't about being selfish or narcissistic. It's about knowing your worth, setting boundaries and not letting anyone treat you less than you deserve. It's about being your own cheerleader, even when the crowd is silent. When we love ourselves, we teach others how to love us. We set the standard for what we accept. We show them that we respect ourselves, and in turn, they learn to respect us. It's a beautiful cycle of love and respect. Each person should be like a thriving tree, deeply rooted in self-love and self-respect, standing strong and complete on their own. Similarly, in a relationship, two mature individuals come together to share their space, not just to support each other's growth. Self-love is akin to a compass in the journey of relationships. Without it, we're like travelers without a map, aimlessly wandering and seeking direction from others. But when we possess self-love, it guides us like a compass, ensuring we are never lost. We become confident navigators, ready to journey alongside someone who respects and understands our path. So, if you're feeling like a half-eaten sandwich, it's time to put yourself first and find that other half within you. So how do we really build self-love? Building self-love isn't like building a piece of IKEA furniture, there's no manual. But don't worry, we've got some tools that might help. Now, imagine if you could assemble your self-love like a flat pack bookshelf. You'd open up the box, lay out all the pieces and follow the instructions, right? But here's the thing. Self-love isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. It's more like a custom-built piece of furniture. It requires time, patience, and a whole lot of self-discovery. Let's start with positive affirmations. They're kind of like those little wood dowels that hold everything together. Every time you tell yourself something positive, like, I am worthy, or I am enough, you're reinforcing the structure of your self-love. It might feel a bit silly at first, but trust me, it works. Next up, setting boundaries. Now, this is like choosing the right spot for your furniture. You wouldn't place a fancy new couch right by the front door where it could get damaged, would you? Similarly, setting boundaries is about protecting your emotional space. It's about saying no when you need to, and prioritizing your own well-being. And finally, we have self-care. This isn't just about bubble baths and face masks, although they can be a part of it. It's about taking care of your physical, emotional, and mental health. It's about eating right, getting enough sleep, and doing things that make you happy. Think of it as polishing your furniture, keeping it in top-notch condition. But here's the most important part. Building self-love is a continuous process. You don't just assemble it once and forget about it, it's like maintaining your furniture, tightening screws, dusting off surfaces, and sometimes even replacing parts. So, even if it feels like you're fumbling around in the dark with an Allen key and a bunch of screws, keep going. Because the end result, a solid foundation of self-love, is worth every bit of effort. Remember, you're not an IKEA product. You don't come with missing parts or confusing instructions. Some practical tips and exercises. Want to know the secret to becoming a self-love guru? Spoiler alert, it doesn't involve any yoga positions. First off, let's put a pin on the idea that self-improvement means you need to become a human pretzel. 
For real folks, you don't need to twist yourself into a knot to love yourself more. Instead, let's talk about some simple, everyday things you can do. Like journaling. Writing down your thoughts and feelings can be a great way to process them. And no, you don't need to sound like a Shakespearean sonnet. Dear Diary, today sucked, is a perfectly good start. Then there's meditation. Now don't go picturing yourself sitting cross-legged on a mountaintop. Five minutes of quiet time in your day can do wonders. And let's not forget about setting personal goals. Something as simple as drink more water or call mom more often can make a big difference. Turns out the road to self-love doesn't require a yoga mat, just a bit of patience and a whole lot of self-acceptance. So, are you ready to ditch those too tight jeans and half-eaten sandwich vibes? Let's take a minute to recap all that we've journeyed through today. We began by understanding self-love, its importance, and how it's the bedrock of any relationship. Like those jeans that are way too tight, not loving yourself can squeeze the joy right out of your life. Then we explored why self-love matters in relationships, how it sets the tone for how others treat us, and how it acts as a barrier against settling for less. Like refusing to be that half-eaten sandwich left on the plate, self-love ensures you demand respect and fullness in your relationships. We also looked at practical tips and exercises to build self-love. Remember, self-love isn't an overnight journey, it's a daily commitment to treating yourself with kindness and respect. Remember, you're not just a size or a half-eaten sandwich, you're a whole lovable and utterly unique person. And don't you forget it, 